Ahamimu, a small town 450 kilometers from Cairo. It is located on the east bank of the Nile River in Upper Egypt, across the river from Sohak. Although the city is hardly known today, in ancient times, Ahamimu was one of the most important religious centers in the world, boasting a rich cultural past that dates back 6,000 years. This was the main site for the worship of the fertility god Min, in the capital of the Ninth Nome in Upper Egypt. The ancient Egyptians called it Ipu or Kent Min. The god Min, usually represented by a huge phallus, was the master of the eastern desert in Egypt between the Nile and the Red Sea. Later, the Greeks equated the god Min with the Greek god Pan, hence the city named Panopolis. Like most sites in the regions between Minya and Abydos, tours in Ahamimu must be accompanied by local police and soldiers. The Ahamimu town today is smaller than the towns of Greco-Roman times and is seriously behind in the process of urban modernization. Most of the buildings of the city are the color of the earth and the city roads have cars which date back as old as 1950. Few tourists visit the city just as few people would pay attention to this video since there are no famous attractions like the pyramids and the Valley of the Kings. But numerous famous people in history are closely associated with the city. For example, the town was the hometown of Yuya, chief of staff of Thutmose IV and Amenhotep III, Ti, the mother of Akhenaten, Pharaoh I, the alchemist Zosimos of Panopolis and the poet Nanus all came from Amimu. In the early Christian era, it was associated with the patriarchs of many sects, and many famous priests visited here or lived here. The legendary abbot Shinut founded a flourishing monastery near Ahamimu, rules that he established influenced the rule of Saint Benedict and continue to be followed today. Although these great men have passed away along with the city's past prosperity, the vocabulary derived from the city is still active in our daily life. The Greek writer Plutarch, famous for his Greece and Roman biography, once said that the people who lived in Panopolis were the first to learn of the death of Osiris and spread the news. This was how the sudden fear that grips a multitude became known as panic. Also, another important fact is that Ahamimu was the center of alchemy and magic during Greco-Roman times. This is why the modern word chemistry is derived from chemis or chemis, the alias of Ahamimu. Some of the oldest books on alchemy have been written by the very famous alchemist Zosimos of Panopolis. It witnessed an amalgamation of ancient Egyptian traditions with Greek philosophy. Perhaps alchemy created two other important industries here. The ancient Greek historian and geographer Strabo, who lived in the first century BC, wrote in his book that Panopolis had excellent linen weaving and stone cutting skills. This just so happens to explain that the Ahamimu necropolis is the main site for the excavations of the most beautiful textiles from the Roman and Christian eras. Before the 14th century AD, Ahamimu stood one of the largest temples in Egypt, the Temple of Min, a large temple similar in style to the Temple of Edfu. Herodotus mentioned in his history the beautifully decorated stone carvings and two huge statues in the Min Temple. Unfortunately, at the end of the Middle Ages, this temple which Arab historians once described as a kind of wonder of the world, along with many monuments was demolished by the local residents, who used the stones to build their own villages. Although the great ancient ruins are gone, this town that seems to be stuck in the past has its own unique charm in my opinion. The thousands-year-old tradition of hand-woven textiles is still preserved, and Ahamimu still plays an important role as the creative center of traditional textile culture. The archaeological park in front of me is also called Temple of Meridamon. In 1981, during the work on a construction site next to the Sheikh Nikshadi Mosque, a 11.5-meter-tall female statue weighing 30 tons was accidentally unearthed. It is a large statue of Meridamon, the daughter of Ramses II, and Meridamon means beloved of the Amon. After the death of Grand Royal Queen Nefertari, she replaced her mother as the Royal Queen of Ramesses II, wife of the gods and high priestess. This limestone statue is an example of ancient Egyptian statue art from the time of the pharaohs and is also the tallest queen statue found in Egypt. Meridamon is dressed in a tight, pleated robe, holds a flail in his left hand, and wears large earrings and a two-feather tiara decorated with a snake symboling the wife of Amon. Also unearthed were several fragments of a statue of Ramses II. There is a height drop of several meters between the sunken courtyard of this open-air archaeological park and the current ground level. This is probably where the Min Temple was originally located. Next to it, archaeologists also discovered another temple built by Ramses II. It was once called Burba which is referred to in Coptic and Arabic literature. It was probably the largest temple ever built by Ramses II. 
However, most parts of the temple complex are still under the modern Muslim cemetery and dwellings. The relocation requires money and time, and there is no obvious progress yet. In addition to the Colossus statue of Ramesses II and his daughter Meridamun, the courtyard is also scattered with some stones with inscriptions from El Amarna. They may have been reused in later temple buildings. Because the site was closed when I got there, I just did a brief shot from outside the wall. The local residents of Ahamimu are very friendly. I guess foreign tourists seem to them to be a rare species in their eyes. It is one of the few opportunities for them to connect with the outside world. Therefore, many people came to shake hands and take photos with me. Their simplicity is touching. I wish them all a good life of their own.